Hey guys, how's it going? So, I'm really, really excited to make this video. Uh, I've been waiting all week to make this video, and I am very excited to tell you guys my thoughts on Aurora Cannabis earnings, the upcoming earnings. Uh, so, let's begin. So, first of all, I just want to tell you guys that, you know, I this is the second day that I have not smoked any cannabis. Uh, I... Um, craving just a little bit. It's not that bad. Uh, I do miss smoking weed. I I miss it, but I'm gonna hold out for a week. I'm determined, and if I break, I will definitely notify my YouTube channel that I cracked and I smoked some pot. But no, nope, I'm going to hold out for one week, so I'm not allowed to smoke any cannabis till Friday. That is my goal moving forward. Uh, so first of all, you know, I want to tell you guys that I travel to Nova, Fire and Flower, a bunch of cannabis store every single week. Every time they come with inventory, I would go to the store, I would check it out. And what I noticed was there was more Metroleaf product than Aurora products. I noticed that uh, Aurora didn't have very many products on shelf. You know, the fact that they had a sales license for... Um, the Aurora Sky, I thought there would be more product on store shelf, Aurora Cannabis products on store shelves, but there wasn't. So that's, I guess that would be kind of a good sign, uh, saying either, either they, you know, couldn't, uh, it takes time to, you know, process the cannabis to bring it to store shelves, because it takes a while to dry the product, dry the cannabis, and then package the product and ship it, you know, it, there, there could be a delay there, they could, you know, they could have ran out during the first three months, and then the, the, during these, the, the next three months, you know, it, the inventory could have been, uh, there, but it could have been, you know, not processed yet, because it takes a while to, uh, to dry the product, like, it could take a couple weeks or a couple months to dry the product, I'm not an expert at drying cannabis products, but, uh, that's my assumption anyways. So, you know, uh, either, either, either the scenario Aurora didn't, uh, ha didn't have any products because, you know, they couldn't dry the product. But what I noticed was Aurora pre-rolls sold out super fast. Aurora pre-rolls didn't come into store shelves that much. You know, there, there's a possibility, you know, they could be shipping product all over Canada and not really focusing on Alberta or Edmonton specifically. So that could be a scenario, but what I noticed was during the three months from, uh, from January to March, I noticed that, you know, there wasn't very many Aurora products on the shelf. I noticed there was more Metroly products than there was Aurora products. But regardless, I also noticed that Metroly products sold out very, very well, and Aurora pre roll sold out very well too, so... The, the store told me that Aurora pre-rolls don't last very long on store shelves. They usually run out in the, the first two days of sale, uh, being on uh, when they get shipment. At least that's what I was been told by the, by the store clerk. So, you know, Aurora products do sell very, very well. So, you know, okay, now let's look at the chart. Aurora right now is downtrending. If you look, the MACD downtrending it's starting its downtrend again uh you know and there's some technical damage it's moved below the bollinger band so you know uh, earnings could come out it could crash but i'm more bullish on the on aurora stock than bearish but if it does crash i think that would be the very last cra stock crash aurora will ever receive i don't think aurora stock will ever crash again after this uh, we wouldn't if it does crash to eight dollars, that will be the last time. I don't see a royal stock ever, ever crashing to eight dollars ever again. Uh, after basically after next week, I I no after the earnings, I don't see a royal stock crashing again. If it does crash, I'm not even positive if if it will crash or not. So last earnings report, they announced. Oh, all right. Uh. An analysis. So, uh, 
a analyst predicts Aurora is going to have a negative 0 0.6 average of a, a 0 0.06 loss uh, and a low estimate of you know the worst case scenario 0 0.08 and high is 0 0.04 for uh Cam Batley said that they will be e e EBITDA positive so uh for next quarter so I don't know if that's going to be scenario they estimate that revenue is going to be 79.68 million dollars which is fair which is possible if you don't include the excise tax, I'm I'm pretty sure seventy nine million dollars is pretty much is pretty possible, but you know if, if you include excise tax, that's gonna be somewhere around the range of seventy million dollars of total revenue. Uh, so you know, uh, for Aurora next earnings, um, you know, the one thing I want to really really f like focus on is the cost. Of sale per gram, I want to see this get lower to about a dollar fifty. I would be happy if it goes to a dollar fifty. Cam Batley and uh, Terry Booth did mention last earnings report that their cost per gram should go down, but you know this is not guaranteed. You know they could say they have more problems and stuff can arise, but we'll see if the cost per cost per, of the sales per gram produce goes down i'm hoping it does if it does then their gross margin will go up for sure i'm also expecting the average net sale price per dry cannabis to be around six dollars i think it's going to decline about 23 cents because they're going to be selling more product to the canadian canadian rec market at least this is my assumption i could be totally wrong maybe the uh maybe it's a little bit higher because they sold cannabis oils to the uh, European market and it, the cannabis oil is in this quarter for the for the month of March they announced on around March 11th uh, I do have the article up here oh wait uh, March 11th German cannabis oil sales to German German pharmacy pharmaceuticals on March 11 2019 so it should be within this quarter that could help bring up their gross margin um, so the average you know I guess extracts will go up but dry cannabis might go down 23 cents so we'll see we'll see where things go for the next quarter but uh, kilogram produced this is the most important I'm expecting 25,000 minimum 25,000 kilograms minimum from the kilograms produced because according to this um, article or uh, according to this uh, core report they said right here that Aurora will have approximately 25,000 kilograms available for Q4 between April to June 2019 so they expect to have at least 25,000 kilograms if they sold 25,000 kilograms if they manage to sell 25,000 kilograms which I expect they will because what happened uh, in the month of April Toronto uh, retail stores came online so they'll be shipping a lot of product to Ontario so I'm totally expecting Aurora to be able to sell at least 25,000 kilograms of product in the month of April to June 2019. So if they do sell that much product, their gross revenue is going to skyrocket because they sold 7,000 kilograms that quarter, uh, this quarter, and they made a total of 54 million dollars so you know if they sold 25,000 kilograms divided by 7,000 3.5 3.5 times 50 54 million that's a hundred and ninety two million dollars in the month of June if Aurora does sell every single product in the month of April to June they will be making a hundred 
and ninety two million dollars. And the quarter is moving forward. They're, they're just gonna increase the amount of products that's gonna sell to the cannabis market. So they're gonna be selling a hundred and ninety two uh, to at least two hundred million dollars every quarter after Q four. And they're gonna be profitable because there's no way they can lose money. Because if you look at the uh, total operational expenses, which is uh you know sixty six million dollars sales and administration, working capital, total assets. I wish I had the set R, but it there's no like. If they even get like $192 million with, let's say, even a 50% gross margin, that's $100 million. They will be cash flow positive even if, you know, they had a 50% gross margin. I think it's not going to be 50%. I think it's going to be higher than 50%. But even if they had a 50% gross margin, they will still be generating about $100 million. It would be literally impossible for them to lose money. And you know how they lost $237 million last quarter? There's two reasons why they lost $237 million that quarter. It's because uh, they spend out Australia's capital, so that cost them money. That's about $100 million that cost them. And then on, and the other reason why was Alcana. During the month of that, during that month, Alcana plummeted and they had to write that on the earnings report because they, they bought Alcana at $15 and Alcana crashed all the way down to nine four dollars like five dollars four dollars like 30 cents during that quarter they had to write that on the balance sheet and that's the reason why they lost 200 uh, sorry 237 million dollars that quarter um, so you know I could bring out the proof, but I'm too lazy. I don't. I don't have. It's on the setar. If you look under the setar, it would tell you. You look, but I'm not gonna bring that up because I forgot to bring up the financials for setar. But and then if you also look right, their medical sales. So the dry cat. The the medical sales from the Europe and extracts and you know just the medical market. <laughs> It was twenty five. It was twenty six million dollars. They managed to make more money on the medical side than they did on the rec side. So the rec still has a lot of potential to increase because I'm I'm expecting that their rec should be higher than the medical. That's my that's my expectation. Uh, so in the future, I do expect. The adult use uh, cannabis net revenue should increase, but uh, that's just my uh, that's just my that's just my prediction. My cat was just trying to claw me right now, so it's kind of annoying. Because uh, <laughs> I think I locked my cat into my room and it's pissed off and it's trying, it's trying to claw me to get me to open the door, but uh, I closed the door because I was trying to make a video. Uh, you know, and Whiskler Medical was closed on March 4th, 2019. I don't know if Whiskler would be integrated into the, uh, financials during the month of March, but, uh, if it did, it definitely would help the, help the revenue and the gross profit to go up. So, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, be, simply because... You know, even if their revenue was was a little bit off of eighty one million dollars, say there was seventy million dollars or sixty five million dollars, I think the most important aspect is their cost per sale grams produced goes down to about dollar fifty. I would be happy. Maybe dollar sixty would still make me very happy, and their kilograms produced go to up at least twenty five thousand kilograms for that quarter. I'm also expecting the kilogram sold to be above 7,000. I'm thinking about at least 7,822, possibly a little higher. Because if you look at the last quarter, they produced about 4,996 kilograms. 
and they sold 6,999 kilograms. So they, you know, I'm. This is probably like extra stuff from the inventory. That's the reason why they ma managed to sell 699 kilograms that quarter. But uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe for future updates and have a great day. Bye.